Uh, we welcome everyone to this March the 4th meeting of the Corsica Canada ISD Board of Trustees. This is a work board workshop and all items that have been discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. Uh, if you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment, mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. These are our core values, and we appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. All right, we have a quorum. First thing is the discussion action items with the Fine Arts Program Report. <laughs> Hello. Um, if it please the board and Dr. Frost, um, I am going to go through this as quickly as possible. But if you have any questions, stop me or I can certainly answer them at the end. Um, so this is the 23-24 um, report and most of what we do actually falls in the spring so a lot of what I'm going to be telling you about are things that I'm going to be referring to as upcoming but the things that have been happening so far have been awesome so it is always an honor to be able to brag on my people and my kids so thank you. Um, CISD art all the way from our two teachers at the high school and all their hundreds of kids down to each elementary each campus has at least one if not two art teachers and they um, participate in a lot of things both on campus but also various competitions including uh, junior vase and vase for um, high school junior vases for the middle school which is a statewide competition it's regional and then some of the kids on the high school level can qualify for state which we did have this year in addition um, they participate in various things like uh, the region 12 contest um, dr frost's holiday card design contest the youth expo arts and crafts and then the upcoming uh, navarra council of the art show um, in general the art classes on the secondary levels are uh, electives although at the middle school it is on a rotation basis and at the intermediate school and the elementaries all the kids cycle through um, through art especially in the elementaries where they do they go back and forth between art and music band by the way i did this alphabetically so <laughs> um, band our band directors are um, just working so hard constantly they start in the fall with football but also uh, with an eye toward marching contest and this why is that doing that the this last time um, the marching contest was held in um, at Midway High School in Waco and they got a rating of excellent one of the things that I wanted to show you though this right here is actually I illegally ripped it from uh, an ad because uh, we want to thank you for the fact that we were able to get new band uniforms and they look so good that the company used our kids as their um, advertisement for the uniforms in addition I would like to thank you as well for the new drum line those are things that we need very much during marching season and our old one was old <laughs> so we appreciate you very much upcoming are um, the UIL uh, concert and sight reading for both the middle school and the high school. Winter Guard is competing right now and you will remember that in the fall they participated in the Dr. Phil commercial filming. So 
um, calicos and dance. Um, so many things to say, such a strong program. We are so fortunate to have the, the people in charge. Brittany Lassiter does a fantastic job and Elizabeth Talley um, does so much to help as well. Um, currently we have 55 dancers on the 23-24 team. They had new line auditions and so I, I need to explain something for next year. The line is not going to be quite as large next year, but that is because Brittany asked for and was able to create the Sapphires, which is the JV team. So we appreciate y'all for that too because anytime we do something like that, it does cost money and time and everything else. So we appreciate that very much. In addition, they have already gone to two different competitions. And the last one they went to was the Galveston Island uh, Festival. And they got almost 20 awards at the, at the contest. And one of the important things about that is our kids don't take dance from the time that they're tiny. A lot of them, the first time they walk into a dance class is with Brittany at the high school. So that is impressive and some of those awards were things like academic achievement and team spirit and things like that. And so it shows that our team is not only hardworking but also very well respected as well. Um, but they will be having spring show on uh, April 26th and 27th and officer auditions coming up at the end of April and the very beginning of May. Oh, one other thing. Uh, world dance is still going strong, even stronger than it was last year. So that is something that we added last year to our dance. Um, cadre of dance uh, classes and so it's been a really good thing. Uh, CHS and CMS choir, uh, Lucretia Brandon standing strong by herself doing both things and we appreciate that very much with Dr. Howard helping with the elementary choirs and then also the show choir. Um, we have 41 students um, performing in ensembles at the um, <clears throat> at the high school plus and there are some overlaps of 10 kids that are in um, Royal Blue which is our show choir. 73 students in performing ensembles at CMS and 34 at CIS and there are lots of things that they have done this year and they are working well when I did this February 17th uh, they w were working toward solo and ensemble and also working toward concert and sight reading that is coming up. And now it won't move. Okay. CISD elementary music is headed up by each of the fine arts teachers at each of the elementary campuses. And so they do things like seasonal uh, programs, the Hispanic Heritage programs, Veterans Day, Cinco de Mayo, all sorts of different things. And so they do really good work. CHS Speech and Debate is part of our UIL program. Debbie Taylor is a retiree hire person that we have doing that program and doing an incredible job. Um, she has spent a lot of time trying to work on getting kids into the class and so we have 12 kids in the class this year when we only had about uh, well, fewer than that last year. So that is growing and we have 25 total students preparing for UIL in March, which is this month at the end of, of March. Also, uh, they've already done a couple of things to begin with, including some invitational meets, which we haven't been able to take kids to in a long time, so that's been awesome. But most importantly, Alexis Samaniego was a state qualifier in um, congressional debate and then also, I didn't have this up there, but we found out a couple of weeks ago that we are going to be sending a team to state cross-examination debate as well. Um, and just doing incredible things, but all those things at the bottom constitute at least a part of the district points for um, speech and debate. Sorry. 
CHS Theater, Brett Butler, thank you for allowing us to hire Brett on when we did. Um, and then my name's up there, but don't worry about that. And Stan Stanley, and I would like to ask everyone to keep Stan in your thoughts and prayers. He has been put on a hospice, so we are um, hoping for miracles for him. So anyway, um, and then Haley Heron is our middle school director, and Adam Walthall is our pack manager. The middle school play Bob, A Life in Five Acts, placed third and got five individual awards. And the book of everything, Shameless, shameless Self-Promotion, we advanced <laughs> on Friday. So, um, and we don't call people the champions because three events, but we got three first place ranks from the judges. <laughs> so in my heart, we were champions. So, and then we also had four students who got uh, individual awards at the contest, and all of that goes into points for District UIL as well. It's been an honor to work with the kids and to watch Brett as she's kind of come into our own working with the kids as well. So thank you for that. Uh, UIL academics, our fourth and fifth grade teams, well our second and third grade teams compete intramurally and then uh, the fourth and fifth graders, the ones that place in the top eight go on to a competition with the rest of the people in our middle school um, district which is called the Ellis County Co-op, so it's all of the elementary schools from Waxahachie plus the two from, El from Ennis and then us, and then Red Oak. And we got, we won both the fourth and the fifth grade district competitions. We placed very high in the middle school competitions as well. And um, at this point, when I was putting this together, we had not co competed yet. But like I said, we got third place with the play and um, some individual awards. The high school uh, UIL teams uh, will be going on April 5th to Terrell High School to compete and then the speech and debate competition will be April 12th at Ennis and um, OAP we already talked about uh, and they have gone to two different practice meets this year plus doing a lot of work in in the house and so I've been really pr really proud of all of that work. CISD Tiger Cheer. Okay, first of all, this picture of these two ladies is here because they saved us this year. Uh, Brittany and Elizabeth were already busy with all the Calico things, and when we needed somebody to take up everything for cheer, they did. And they are still doing so. We have cheer tryouts this week, as a matter of fact. And so um, we appreciate all that they've done to, to keep everything going. And um, then also our CMS coaches, uh, Angie Campbell and Mackenzie Irvin, having those kids doing lots of really, really good things as well. Um, physical education, uh, right there in the middle, you see Trina Wadley. Trina was named our specialist for fitness gram this year. And so she is responsible for taking all of the data from all of the kids from all of the campuses and not just in PE, but anything that counts as PE too, like um, ROTC and band and everything. And she aggregates the data, not disaggregates it, and puts it all together for us. And so we appreciate her very much. And a special message, uh, we would like to thank Dr. Frost for her 14 years here and for her unwavering support of everything fine arts, UIL, everything else that we do. I don't know if she knew that that was going to be in there, but ha ha. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate you very much and hope that you have a fantastic retirement and every tiger every day. Thank you. Uh, we will be competing on March 22nd at Terrell High School in the Jamie Foxx Performing 
Art Center. <laughs> Somebody asked if it was the Eric Bishop one, and I said it's actually spelled Jamie Fox. But anyway, um, so yes, and we will be at 10 o'clock because we are first in the draw. So we're the only ones that know for sure what time we'll be on stage. So that'll be the Friday after we get back from spring break. So any other questions? Thank you. It's an honor. I appreciate it. Yeah, forget that. Get a shade of trophy. Get a shade of trophy. Claim. Shade likes those trophies. All right. Uh, the district instructional calendar for 2024-2025 school year. Dr. Frost, Dr. Brown, distinguished members of the board. calendar one well I can get started um, on February 21st we posted three calendars three calendar options it went to all staff students community members parents all stakeholders and I'm just going to go through each calendar so on option a in the survey it had a hundred Oh, option one had 378 votes out of 1,261 votes. And in that option, teachers returned to school on August 2nd. That's when they would return back for professional development. Our first day of school would be August 14th, fall break October 7th to the 11th, a winter break, which would be February 7th and the 10th. It, would, it was a Friday and a Monday. And then Easter break April 18th and the 21st, which was also a Friday and Monday. And then last day of school graduation, May 23rd. And you'll see, and he'll see this in just a little bit, that October 4th is actually our bye week for football. And I've talked to Coach Rogers, Brittany Lassiter, uh, Mr. Hinton. If you want to see a possible fall break change to September 30th to October 4th to to be at the same time as our bye week that would be they're fine with that they're going to still have practice just so everyone knows calico's cheer everyone would still have practice but it would be nice for them to all they could have some time off during that week so that's an option for you to look at and then option b which had um, 691 votes of the 1261 votes total count and teachers return on august the first on that thursday for professional development First day of school would be uh, Monday, August the 12th. Fall break, of course, October 7th to the 11th, unless we decide that we would like to change that. Winter break would be February the 3rd through the 7th. We would only have Good Friday, April 18th for Easter. And then last day of school graduation, again, would be May the 23rd. And then we had option C with just a few votes of 192 out of the 1,261 total votes. Uh, teachers would have returned on August 1st. First day of school would have been August 12th. Fall break, again, August 7th to the 11th. Winter break, February 6th through the 7th. Easter break, uh, a four-day holiday, April 18th and 21st. Last day of school for kids would have been May 22nd, and then last day of, for staff and graduation, May the 23rd. Um, like I said earlier, we had 1,261 votes this time. Last year we had uh, 1,201 votes, so we had about 60 more votes this year. Uh, you know, we shared it on social media with Raymond. Um, lots of parents shared it. I know the board members, we all shared it. Um, so once again, option one had 378 votes, option two, 691 and option three is 192. So um, I'm re requesting approval for calendar option B and then of course if you would like to take that option on changing that fall break to the previous week to have it the same time aligned with our bye week for football. I personally I think moving the, that week to the week of the bye week uh, would, would be best. Um, I know the 11th is an out-of-town game. The past two years it's been an in-town game and it's mm -hmm. uh, not really been ideal. So I think if we move that week up one um, to follow in our bye week, that would be a lot better for everyone. Um, for the band, Calicas, everyone, and, and the football team. Same as well. 
Yeah, I'm, I agree with you, Jamie. As I count the weeks, I mean, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks without a, you know, you have Labor Day. Yes. That's a long time. I mean, especially when you first start school, I mean, because you're going to split up the nine, the first nine weeks anyway, no matter what we do, right? Yeah, I think that'll actually be nice because then you'll still have one, two, three, four, six, seven weeks before Thanksgiving, so you have seven and seven. So I'm fine with moving that week if that's what everybody wants to do. If someone makes the motion, if they'll just add that into the motion, then we'll have it um, recorded okay. in the minutes. I will entertain a motion, team. I move that we approve up oh, this is the wrong motion sorry i move to approve calendar option b as the course can ISD 20 24 25 district calendar with the edit of our fall break to be moved to the week of september 30th september 30th through october 4th to align with the um, by week that we have with football. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the calendar option B uh, for the CISD 2024-25 school year with moving the off week in October to September 30th to October 4th. All those in favor say aye. 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 All, those opposed, say, all those opposed say no have it and we have accepted calendar option B with the change of the first week off being September 30th to October 4th to coincide with the bye week in football. Okay, thank you very much. Now we're going to go to the boilers for our field house. Yes, sir. That's me too. Thank you. Um, I'm here to ask for approval for the purchase of two replacement boilers at the field house. Um, I'll talk a little bit about it. I have our expert, Ben Baker here, our director of maintenance as well. We currently have two boilers at the field house that takes care of the hot water for the for laundry, showers, sinks, things like that. They've been there since uh, the building was built in 2006-ish. Yeah. Um, they need to be replaced. They've been repaired multiple times and now they're not passing inspection. So um, we, have, we currently have two, and they'll be replaced with 400,000 BTUs each, state of the art. They're custom built for us. Um, we received three quotes. Um, you'll see the one quote attached. That was, um, it's with AKV Plumbing. It's for $76,994.03. Um, that was the, the best quote, the most comparable quote that with the, what we currently have with the bowlers. Um, let's see. And the reason it wouldn't pass inspection, there was holes in the vent stack. Um, I do have just a picture. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we believe pictures are worth a lot. Everybody's looking at me like, ooh. Yeah, I think it's time. Any questions or comments? The picture speak for itself. Yeah. Do what? The picture speak for itself. They do. Well, they're 18 years old. Look, yeah, they're 18 years old. Yeah. They're 18 years old. And Magnus has done a really good job on trying to repair those throughout the years, and we're just at the point where we need to get those in place. And are y'all comfortable with the units that y'all are bringing in from AKV? That's that. That's what I'm afraid of. Are we? Are we giving our? Do we? Do we have enough extra capacity? Yeah, we're not stepping down. Okay. Um, they're the exact same size. Plus, these are more efficient. Uh, they recover a whole lot quicker. Okay. So it'll be just a whole lot better all around. Are there a warranties or anything with this system, and how long? Yes, there will be, but I don't have that. We don't have that. But yes, there will. Be. 
I can get that from AKV and get, send that to y'all. What would be the time frame as far as installation? Uh, we could tell them tomorrow if you want and have an order. Uh, It'd be a summer project or something soon? Before summer. Okay. We're pushing it. Okay. Okay. Are y'all good with that? Yeah. And that's in the that's in the field house. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So you said, what did you say? You're gonna try to get them get it installed when? Well, I'll have to talk with them again and see how long the ordering process would be. Definitely during the summer break, but maybe before that. So, like, if they have open gym, that, the kids wouldn't be affected by the the maintenance part, the work, the work. No, it's the football is kind of in the off. Right now, yeah, they're not washing like they are. Yeah. Okay. They do wash like a lot of clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, well, I will entertain a motion. I move that we approve the purchase of two replacement boilers at the field house for the cost of $76,994.03. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the. <clears throat> The purchase of two replacement boilers at the field house for a cost of seventy-six thousand nine hundred ninety-four dollars and three cents. All those approved, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. Ayes have it, and we've approved the purchase of two replacement boilers at the field house. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I do have an audience for guests. Um, Ms. Harrison is just just one. Still okay. Um, Mr. David Thomas. So before you go, I do have to read a statement for you, and uh, then we'll see if, if you ask me any questions, okay? The CISD Board of Trustees encourages comments about the district from citizens of the district, from district employees, or from other members of the public. Anyone wishing to speak may do so at this time. The board asks that each participant's comments pertain to public education and be no longer than three minutes. The board also specifically requests that the speaker refrain from mentioning other students or parent and staff member names when addressing their concerns. Under the Texas Open Meetings Act, the board is not permitted to discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on the agenda for tonight's meeting. This means that the board members are, not, are unable to deliberate, ask questions, provide you with a response, or take any actions relating to your comments. If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board's deliberation of the issue will be deferred until the appropriate time during the meeting. In addition, the board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. Complaints brought by employees, students, or parents may be brought in accordance with our local school board policy. Each of these processes provide that if a resolution cannot be achieved administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as properly posted agenda item. Copies of our district policy on public participation in meetings and filing complaints can be found on our website. If you need assistance with these policies or processes, please call Merrill Harrison in the superintendent's office. So Ms. Kelly will time you and she will let you know when you have one minute left, okay? Appreciate it. Good evening to everyone in the school board, school district. <clears throat> I appreciate everyone for allowing me to express my uh, feelings about a situation that I'm having at a campus. Um, I've had several, I've had a few instances that I know of, not quite sure how often it goes on, but I'm positive it goes on in other places. Um, my child has, um, she's in a dual language, so she's expected to perform in a higher level of education. But right now, I'm not feeling like she's getting the proper environment. Um, it's not a positive one, and I don't feel like her instructors are uh, properly trained in the situation. Uh, because like I said, there's been three situations to where uh, the first one, I addressed it by, when my child told me what happened, we went to the school, we had a meeting with the principal, two principals, a counselor, 
and a teacher or two, uh, two teachers, both teachers are partners. I ask myself, do these teachers still communicate anymore about the issues that need to be handled because it doesn't seem that they are. <clears throat> um, the second time, um, it was a hearsay situation to where my child says this is continuing. Um, they're friends, but then when you use those type of terms, as um, the term is black monkey, a uh, derogatory term, which, you know, regardless of what the situation is, whether you can't win the situation, that does not give you the right to use that against my child, in my opinion. <clears throat> so I'm trying to understand what is our protocol and procedure um, when children are, are doing these things. Uh, okay. <clears throat> now, this last situation, I was, um, or they reached out to me and told me what happened. Then I was aware, uh, made aware that there's a form that you fill out when there's an incident. I feel like the incident form should be filled out in each incident so that when there's something that happens, you can kind of address and have a, a paper trail because that's how I've always seen it being done. The teacher did not say so she didn't have recollection. She actually forgot about the meeting that we had because it was not documented. <clears throat> the teacher, my daughter has told me the teacher has also said that she does not see how black monkey is a derogatory term. So the teacher seems to be a, a little bit older than me, so I would, I'm kind of wondering, like, where was this teacher during the, my fifth grade year where the riots and there all this thing, these things were happening and we went through this as a community. So I'm just looking for understanding from the school board and trying to figure out what I need to do in order to put the stop to this and give my child, um, my children, that opportunity to, to learn. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay. We will now adjourn into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code Section 551.01.